Hi there, gorgeous. First and foremost, excuse the decor behind me here. I am in the middle of redecorating. I'm not really sure what to do with this table just yet. I'm playing around with it. I really like the painting so far, but it's a work in progress. So there, yeah. I'm trying to make it more homey looking in the videos. And so this is a pretty good start, I feel like. In today's video, I'm sharing my high-end palette collection with you. When I was getting all of my palettes together for this video, it was one of those instances where I kept pulling out drawers and finding another one. And then, oh, here's three more. Oh, there's four more. So they were coming out of my ears. I didn't have them all in one spot like I do with my drugstore eyeshadow palettes, which is what I'm probably going to do after I film this video and I put everything back because that makes the most sense. So I'll show you each one. I'll give you a mini review as we go along. I'm not gonna spend too much time on each palette though because there is so much here. But I also want to mention that if you missed my drugstore palette collection, I will have that linked for you below. That came out in August and I asked if you'd wanted to see the high-end version and a lot of you said yes. So. Here we go. First palettes we will talk about are the ones from Urban Decay's and Naked series. I have all of them. I do want to get the Naked Cherry and review that for you. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> so I have Naked 2, Naked 3, the original Naked, which is still one of my all-time favorite palettes, Urban Decay's Naked Heat, Naked Smoky. Yes, all of them are here. You know what's really funny though is the only palette that I really use a lot out of these that I just showed you from the Naked series is the original Naked. The other ones I have found drugstore dupes for and I tend to gravitate more towards those than the Urban Decay eyeshadows. Urban Decay tends to get muddy on me very quickly. I'm not sure why. And so that's why I go for the drugstore dupes. Stila palettes, I have a few of those. I have the Mind palette, which is an all matte eyeshadow palette. I have hit pan on one of the eyeshadows in there because I love it so much. And I also have the Stila Spirit palette, which is a more shimmery version. And it's still just as great quality, love, love, love. And then I have the old Stila in the palettes, which ugh, these are my absolute favorites. I was so bummed when they discontinued these. The Stila in the light was an all time love of mine. Still love it. I'm afraid to use it because of that eyeshadow that's wearing away quickly there. The in the no palette, another range of great colors to choose from. Steal it in the moment. This is the only true purple palette that I've ever really loved, 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 and I still don't know why they discontinued it. The Steal it in the garden. Ugh. Greens, simply beautiful color scheme there. Aha, I missed one. Since we just talked about Urban Decay, I'll include this one too, their Smoked Palette. This was, eh, oh well. <laughs> this was one that I love, love, loved when it first came out. It's still a really great one. I just don't reach for it that often. Oh yes, and the Limited Edition Urban Decay Palettes. Who remembers these? Yes, the Vice 2. That was one that was buried at the bottom of one of my drawers. And I really enjoyed that one when it came out. I don't remember which vice this one was, but you probably remember the package. I got stuff falling all over the place here. And is there an eyeshadow that's broken in there? Oh, gone. Yep, one fell out on me just now. Ah, uh, the one called Freeze. And I think it was that really light pink one. I don't remember, but oh, bummer. I still don't see it on my floor. I don't, it's, I don't even know. It went into the dark hole that is this makeup room. You know we all have one in our house. It's the same place that socks go to die. Next one is the Vice Limited Reloaded Palette. Remember this one? Yes. That one right there. Oh, there's just brushes falling out all over the place. The only thing I really didn't care for with these palettes in particular was how bulky the packaging is. I mean, it's so thick that they are hard to store. They take up so much space. The last Urban Decay palette was this Vice one, which I think I really loved this one. Oh yes, this one had a lot, oh yes. Especially that shade right down there. You're not surprised, are you? Nope, pretty. Let's talk about Lorac. I have a lot of palettes from them. Really enjoy their eyeshadows, the quality, the pigment, overall lasting power. I've never had any issues with them. I did pick up all of their Mega Pro palettes. At least I think this is all of them. They may have a fifth one that I am missing. 
So we'll go through these quickly here. First one was the Lorac Mega Pro One. A lot of controversy surrounding this one. I believe they didn't produce enough and then they hyped it up so badly that it made a lot of people really upset, which I completely understand. So with that palette. Then there was the Mega Pro Two palette, which yes, this one had a little bit of a cooler shade range in it. So it wasn't my personal favorite, but still great quality with the eyeshadows all the way around. Then there was the Mega Pro Three. Yeah, this one was a warm neutral palette, a lot of neutrals, so many neutrals in there, but great shade range also. Mega Pro 4, this is one that I want to use more now that I look at it because I didn't really get to use it that much when it first came out, but I love the colors in there. I also have the Lorac Unzipped palette, which is pretty good quality. It used to be one of my absolute favorites. And who can forget, cannot forget to mention, the Lorac Pro One palette, which is still one of my all-time favorite eyeshadow palettes. I mean, if you were going to buy a palette as your first high-end palette, I would really recommend either the Lorac Pro One or the Lorac Pro Two, depending on the colors that look best on you. This one is a little bit warmer, more neutral. The Lorac Pro Two is cooler by comparison. <laughs> I wore a big old hole in nectar there, but it's a great, great shade range in here. Anastasia palettes, I have quite a few of those to share with you. First one being the World Traveler palette. This is one that oh, love, love, love. Thankfully, you can get all of these eyeshadows in single pans from Anastasia because this is a limited edition palette. You can't get it anymore, but really happy to know that because there are a lot of shades in here that I love. Other one that I have here is the Modern Renaissance. This one can be duped with so many <laughs> drugstore palettes out there that I don't feel like it's worth getting. Trust me, there are much better ones that you can get from the drugstore. Another one I have here is the Self Made Palette. And I don't really use this one that much because I don't really care for the shade range, to be honest. I mean, the quality is still good, don't get me wrong. It's just the shades don't really sing to me. Unlike this one, which is the Tamana palette. This, oh, we got brushes flying everywhere here. This is such a beautiful palette. Unfortunately, it was limited edition, so you can't get it anymore. I'm not even sure if you can get singles from the Anastasia line to match the shades in here, but oh, this was a love of mine for a few months. Then there's the Anastasia Artist palette, and woo, it's bright. I did a review on it when it first came out. It's <laughs> really great when you pair it up with other eyeshadows in your collection, if you love color. Again, a limited edition palette, a lot of these are. Then there is the Norvina palette, which I just got very recently. I haven't had the chance to use it yet. I actually bought it to compare to a drugstore dupe that I found, but it does have really pretty shades in there. One I never used. I bought this one. Uh, I think I got exhausted from being pregnant and I never did a review on it. This is the Prism palette from Anastasia. You can see I hadn't even taken the little plastic thing out of it, but another great shade range. Would like to use it someday. Too Faced. I have a lot of Too Faced palettes to share with you here. Beginning with the Too Faced Chocolate Bun Buns palette. I love this palette, still one of my favorites. And then there is the Too Faced Semi-Sweet Chocolate Bar. I didn't really care for this one when it first came out, to be honest, but the more I used it, I started to really enjoy it much more. And there's a look that I did with this one for my maternity shoot pictures that I absolutely love. That's the only way that I will wear this palette now. And the original Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, because they did not put any of the shade names on the palette, I still have that silly little piece of plastic that tells you which eyeshadows are which. Still a great palette and one of my favorites. I also have the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette, which I have duped with several drugstore palettes that I have found in the past. Great quality. Didn't really care for the peach scent in this one. I felt like it was too candied and a little bit overdone. If you smell it too much, I feel like it could make you sick to your stomach. My only complaint with that one. I also got this one from Too Faced and I never used it. This was the Clover palette. Really liked the shade range in here, and there are a lot of beautiful mattes too. 
I need to use that one. This is another one I purchased, never used, the White Chocolate Bar Palette. Gosh, there are so many. See, this is what happens when you have an eyeshadow problem. You buy stuff, you forget about it, you never use it. Too Faced came out with a couple of holiday collections that I really loved when I first purchased them, but like the Urban Decay ones, they're so big and bulky that I forget about them and they get pushed to the back of the drawer. This is the Everything Nice palette. Great shade range of colors for eyeshadows and I loved the face products here at the bottom too. The other one that I picked up was the Christmas in New York Chocolate Shop palette. I never ever used this one, which is sad to me because it's a great palette. I may need to use that for Christmas at some point. Maybe not in a video, just by myself, but oh, these are really pretty. Even though I get disappointed when I find stuff like that that I've not ever used, it makes me a little excited because it's like having something brand new given to you that you get to use for the first time. Tarte, let's talk about Tarte. Okay, I have a couple of holiday collections here from Tarte too. I don't remember the years of these, unfortunately. This was the first one. Very, very big, big packaging. Ugh, hard to open. <laughs> but I loved it when I did use it. I remember using it when it first came out. And just like the Too Faced palette, you get face products, a lot of eyeshadows. And what was this? Oh, this was a mascara, lip gloss, and an eyeliner. I don't think I ever used these over here. I'm going to have to keep a lot of these out on my makeup table and try and use them. And this was the other Tarte palette collection that I picked up from one of their holiday sets. I didn't care for the packaging myself. And again, it's super big and bulky. I really don't like that they make these palettes so ginormous, but great colors in here. And I think this one had a mini palette too up top that you could take out. Oh yeah, this was the little palette that came with that big collection, which I do like that they gave you something that you can pop out and it's a little easier to keep. I may just depot all these though, honestly. I mean, that's the best way I could see to use them and get rid of the packaging, why not? Tart Tartlet Palette, another one of my favorites. An all matte eyeshadow palette, great shade range in here. This is one that suits so many different com The Tart Tartlet Palette, still one of my all time favorite palettes. All mattes, great shade range, a lot of beautiful neutrals in here. They have a row of plums in there that work on so many different eye colors. Still finding stuff from Urban Decay. <laughs> the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics. This was a, another palette that I purchased for review purposes. It's not one that I pick up personally and I don't reach for it, to be honest. Going back to Tarte, the Tartist Pro. This is another one that I found buried in the back of a drawer, but I love it. I forgot how much I really enjoyed this palette. What I love the most about it is that row of metallic eyeshadows that they give you in addition to the beautiful matte shades. I'm really enjoying this video because I'm finding eyeshadow palettes I've never used and I feel like it's going to draw me out of this rut that I've been in. I've been stuck to like four different palettes. I've been rotating quite often recently and I've been wanting to try something new. Well, I've had new stuff here the whole time. Oh, another one that was my favorite for a while is the Laura Mercier palette. This was the artist palette, and it was the very first one that ever came out. She came out with a second one too, but I didn't really care for that one as much as this one. And then I have a couple here from Huda Beauty, the Desert Dusk palette, and I bought this one to dupe with the Bad Habit Athena palette, which is an excellent dupe to use in place of it. I still use my Huda palette though because <laughs> Spent a lot of money on this. And I have two other little additions from Huda Beauty that I purchased most recently. The Emerald Obsessions palette, which is an all green eyeshadow palette, simply gorgeous. And the Amethyst Obsessions palette, which is an all purple eyeshadow palette. That is what I'm wearing on my eyes today, if you're curious. I did do a video with these two very recently showing you looks with them, so if you happen to miss it, plus a tutorial on what I'm wearing here. I will have it linked for you below. Ciate, I only have one eyeshadow palette from this brand. This is the one that was created in collaboration with Chloe Morello, who is also 
a YouTuber here from Australia and I bought it not only to support her because I love her, but also for the shades in here. There were so many gorgeous warm tones that I fell in love with and the quality is second to none. Another limited edition palette though, sorry to tell you that. And then the last ones I'm going to talk about here are the Viseart palettes. I picked up their bridal satin palette to compare with one that I had from the drugstore. It's not really one that I go for, to be honest with you. I don't care for the shades in here. I feel like they're not that pigmented and I was a little disappointed in it personally. I also have their editorial palette, which I compared with a $2 palette from Five Below. It was a dupe and the, oh, the colors in here are simply electrifying. And I also have the Neutral Mattes palette. I don't have it on me right now because I'm waiting for a friend to ship it back to me. I went to her house and I accidentally left it there, but that is another one of my all-time favorite eyeshadow palettes. It's one that I reach for quite often. I'm actually glad that I left it at her house <laughs> because I got into this rut where it was all I wanted to use. Too Faced released a couple of new palettes from their Tutti Frutti line also, and I had the opportunity to try them out. This is the first one in Sparkling Pineapple. Now, me personally, I did not really care for the quality of the eyeshadows from this collection. They are incredibly difficult to pick up with a brush and get them onto your eyes. Not the mattes, but the shimmers. The shimmers are incredibly difficult to work with. And then I also have the Razzle Dazzle Berry eyeshadow palette. And that's what that one looks like up close. So really disappointed in the shimmer formula that they decided to go with with these palettes from the Tutti Frutti collection. They're not like the other shimmers from Too Faced line, so I don't know if they did something different with the formula here, but I was not impressed. I will try to have all of these palettes linked for you below. <laughs> I will try. YouTube tends to cut me off if I put too much in the description box. I figured that out recently. I think it was when I did my If I Were Not a Beauty Guru makeup collection video. I tried to list everything in the description box and YouTube told me I had too much to say. Like I said, I will try to link them for you below. Check the description bar if you'd like to check any of these out. Let me know if you've tried any of these. Which ones are your favorites? If I didn't mention any that you really love, feel free to include yours below also. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. I'll be here in 50 minutes. Okay. Do you like it? Does it blur in the background nice? Mm, uh, not really, but. Is she not gorgeous? <laughs> Thank you. I mm. love you too. Mm, I love you more. Oh. No, you don't. No, I do. <laughs>